Okay, let's get started. So you can see this is my website. It's uh, so the domain name is electronics.com. Uh, so replace the first E with YI and followed by electronics.com. So it's electronics.com. And you can see all the activities uh, for myself and also my students at Fuller's College. And most importantly, you guys probably need to are interested in whatever happening here in this link. I can also find out this link under this teaching tag. So you can see FL, FYL, learn by doing robotics. But also there are some um, quick links for you guys. Just click. You found the syllabus and the schedule for this class as well. So we have eight classes in total. And after today's class, you'll have a homework, and which is due next Monday. So you guys are uh, expected to, tur to turn in uh, hand writings, hand calculations on the paper uh, next Monday in the class. And since you have been trained, if you are going to turn in that homework, assume you are trained on that specific problem. So I'm going to give you a quiz on that on Monday. So after next Monday, you guys should have submitted three stuff. So the first one was a little soldering LED one, and I still have records. I'm going to give you credits on that. And the second one is homework one. You are going to submit that on Monday next week. And the third one is a quiz. So 100 points for each of them. Um, So do we have exams? We don't. Okay, so t there might be other, um, some other assignments as well happening uh, following the weeks. Maybe another one next Monday and another one after that week, right? And starting from the fourth week, the fifth week, we're going to start building that robot. Since you have learned all this uh, fundamental knowledge, which will be used for the, the to, to build that robot, so you are not like knowing nothing about what's happening, you don't even know what are electrons, but building a robot. I hope you guys can understand everything we are building, so you are confident about what's happening on the board. It's a lot of fun. And uh, so we have how many sections? One, two, three. So I have three, three chances. And we have two hours per, three hours, two hours, two hours every month, every week. So you have two hours each time, and you have totally six hours for three weeks to build it up, to make it work. And the last week will be this demonstration. Um, after these snacks and drinks, if we still have some remaining money, I'm going to buy more snacks and drinks on the demonstration day. Uh, and that's the plan for this semester, for this class. Any comments? Any questions? No? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You just don't have the tools. Right. Parts. Yeah. Good or bad? <laughs> and there's no final exam. So I, Every time I come out, came over, I just want to kill myself. Since I've been teaching for the whole day, right? I, I believe the same to you guys. I've been being in the class for the whole day. And there might, if you are taking in average, asking five to six classes, right? Usually. And you probably hate 50% of the classes. I've been tortured for no, you like them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, good for you. Um, that, but that happens. When I was in college, that happens. Some some classes I don't I don't teach uh, anyway. But as long as long as you guys are learning, uh, that that's okay. So, and I know you can be pretty exhausted. So I don't want to have a really fast pace for this class, I'm like killing you. You know, it's it's not reasonable. And for freshmen, probably not. Please relax. And I'm gonna teach you some really interesting things. I think are serving as the most critical uh, prerequisites for any projects that are going to work with in the future. So last time, I actually hired two students from my first year launch class last year. 
I just reached out to the students and uh, trying to uh, get them, you know, engaged in my lab. So they were paid for two summers full time and another one for the whole year, plus the summer and also the academic year. So if you are interested in that, we can definitely talk about it. And there are some, probably some new funding is uh, is coming pretty soon, later this year. So. Um, all right, let's get started. So after the class, what I will do is I will add a link to this video tag. I can click to that. It's going to guide you to a YouTube channel. They can directly watch the video, whatever I'm going to record. Here. I, I'm recording right now, so it's going to be whatever I'm recording. And the notes, so whatever I, I'm writing on the paper will be scanned as a PDF. And upload it to the, to the website. So you can take. You don't have to be very busy making notes. Usually, I don't recommend my students to make notes, so they are not able to think when writing on the paper. You don't have to make notes. So the notes are online. It's going to be online after 15, 15, usually fifteen minutes, twenty minutes after the class. Um, but if you want to make some calculations, which is reasonable, whenever I'm right to the calculation, you can practice, so you can learn it faster. That's a good way to learn, but you don't have to. And usually I don't encourage, encourage students to make notes. It takes their time to think. Um, you, you have the time to watch the video while you are working on your homework assignment. Uh, usually they are very similar problems compared to whatever I'm going to demonstrate here. Um, you are Welcome to watch the video, and this is on YouTube, so they have a lot of functions. You can play it at five times higher speed, you know, five times faster. Just to try to save your time. It's going to be a two-hour class. You want to spend another two hours after class to watch the video, right? Five times. Maybe not five, two times, usually, the fastest. Um, so you will be fine. But even, so after the you watch the video, if you still have questions, you can visit my office during the office hours. Because Monday, Wednesday, Friday is on the syllabus. Right, you can click the link. It's not showing the same view. Hmm. So I have to resume it. Um, yeah, so if you still have questions, come visit during my office hours, physically or remotely. I'm going to open the uh, it's Microsoft Teams. It's not Zoom, but similar. You click the link, you can get into the meeting room. Uh, you know, if, if you have some questions before, you know, for example, on Friday and next Monday, there will be a home uh, assignment due. So you can definitely log in to that meeting if you want to connect me remotely. Uh, it's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Just look at the syllabus. It's, there's a link over there, time frame for the office hours. Get into there, ask me questions, finish the homework, and turn in on Monday. It'll be fine. There are how many assignments you can count it? The final project, homework one, quiz one, maybe homework two, quiz two, so totally five. If you miss one, probably it's going to affect your grade pretty significantly. Because they are not difficult, they are well explained, I hope. <laughs> If you don't, you know, if you can understand my accent. Um, and video are, videos are recorded, notes are uploaded. What else I can do? Office hours, I'm available. Even after office hours, I'm still available. Just reach me out, uh, send me an email. If I'm able to, I will answer questions. So for a circuit like this, that's a battery. Here's a 6K and 2K resistor, and this is grounded. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no resistance. Just R1, R2, that's a resistor one, resistor two. That's B in. 
V out. And there's a theory is called the voltage divider theory. Oops. Which is V out equals to V in times R2 over R1 plus R2. And we're going to derive it. It's very, very, very important. And why does this always work? So if we explain this intuitively, it is like the voltage share of this resistor equals to the resistance share of this resistor. So V out is a voltage at this point, but keep in mind, all the voltages are relative. So this voltage, I say this point is V out. I'm comparing to where? Compared to the ground, because V out minus zero is still V out. So I can directly say that this point is V out. Can be any voltage. Can be five volts, three volts, two volts. So <clears throat> V out at this point, we, it's a it's a node. It's a node voltage. Node. voltage, but also it's a voltage across the resistor as well. So it's a voltage dropped. It's a voltage, VL is a voltage dropped at, uh, onto this R2. Is that right? Why is there a voltage drop? Because there's a current. Current is uh, denoted as I, according to Ohm's law. The voltage across this resistor, we say, we call it VR2, equals to I times R2. That's Ohm's law, right? So if there's a current, if there's a current flows through this resistor, there will be a voltage drop across the resistor, and that's called Ohm's law. Keep in mind, current flows through the resistor, boom, voltage drop. And that voltage drop equals to I times R. So all this circuit one and fundamental logic uh, concepts can be very boring at the very beginning, but eventually you'll find out they are super useful and important. Uh, sometimes I can understand that for most of the freshmen, not every single one, but when I was uh, you know, first year of my college, I. Uh, didn't spend that much in classroom because, you know, young men, young women, it, hormones, you know, you, you want, you have clubs, meetings, uh, uh, any other gatherings, uh, you want to spend a lot of time over there. When you are sitting here, listen to my Ohm's law, come on, my mind is going out in spin works or something. If you are 21 years old, otherwise you probably are not allowed to sit in the bar, but uh, beers, parties, music, uh, you drive the car, but you want to open the music to the loudest level. And uh, that's when I was 20 years ago, that what, not 20, but 15 probably, I, that's what I did. When I was in that, uh, that age. I didn't realize that very times, very short time soon after that, and you are facing serious problems, like finding a job. You are not having enough skills or uh, complex skill set to compete with other people. If you are still want to pursue a higher degree, you know, master's, PhD, you still have the chance to learn more things. But if you are not going to pursue that for any other reason, like financial reasons or other personal reasons, you're not going to hire, getting higher degrees, you'll step out from the college and try to find a job. 
and you you was you was in an engineering degree or program, but you are not able to find an engineering job because you didn't learn that many things. What what you are supposed to learn, because you wasted the first two years or three, even the whole four years in the college because of hormone hormones or something else, right? You know, young people want to play the music gatherings, party, and all this thing. Except for learning. So totally understand, but just want to give you guys some heads up. College is super short. How many internships, how many summers do you have? Do you remember last time I mentioned to you guys? Three as a maximum, right? Probably just two. And the best one, probably one at your junior year. Since you have learned all these classes, you are capable of doing it, something. And the last one will be the senior year you're going to graduate. It's very fast. And I do not recommend some of the students are very capable, but they are not making smart choices. They are thinking like, I'm still young. I can do a lot of things. I'm interested in chemistry. I'm interested in biology, all the things. I'm curious about it. So I want to learn this. And there is, I'm just taking computer science, computer engineering as a minor. I'm just going to take engineering as a minor. I do not recommend it. And you are also, sometimes they are thinking like, my 15 years ago, I was thinking, I'm still going to, going to graduate school. So I still have to learn all the uh, very marketable skills that the companies requires uh, when, I was, when I'm in my master's, in my uh, PhD. So that, that's what I was thinking about 15 years ago. And so that's why I was you know, doing all the other things, interdisciplinary studies, all the things are not really can direct you, uh, can help you directly get a job. But I can, you know, I don't know, it's a good or bad thing because I want to be a professor. I need this type of knowledge to do research, to acquire funding, to pay students, uh, build a lab. Uh, but for people who want to directly get a job, you, you directly want to just dive into that topic. And you do not have that much time. Do not, do not waste your time. Don't think about, like, I, I'm still young. I can do a lot of things. Actually, it's not. I can let, let you know, like after 30 years old, everything is going down. I mean, physical as well. So I used to be able to play basketball every single day and without feeling any pain on my knees. And now, not even once. I have to like slowly walking like a 60 year old man and jogging sometimes like three times a week. And pain just comes and you have to take the pills, glucosamine, something like that. And it's, oh. And pull-ups, I used to be able to do 15, now it's just eight or six. Catch some fat on my ear, on my belly. So it's not, um, and your memory is, you are losing your memory, not, not that critical, but sometimes it, you think you cannot stay up overnight. You know, in the college, you probably have a lot of times you will stay up until like 3 a.m. because there's something due next day. So it happened a lot. Even when I was in my PhD, I used to stay up for a few times every semester. It's just it's out of control because I, I, I was trying to get a better grade. I was, I was trying to keep polishing that circuit for the report. So I just cannot just stop working and submit it. It's never getting perfect. I still spend a lot of time on that, trying to make it perfect. So which cost? that sleepless nights, a few, or not single, a single one. So for a few semesters, I have to stay up. So I was still able to do that when I was 25 to 30 years between that time, uh, age. No, I, I, I couldn't do it. If I do that, I feel I'm dying next day. And uh, also, my, you know, for example, for other people, for, for, for families, for relatives, you, have, you probably have seen that. But some, some young people, they probably have never seen that. Your family members are passing away. I mean, it's, it happens for everyone because of the illness, any kind of cancers. It happens that like, sometimes when you are over 35 years old, cancers comes out of control. It, all different types of cancers. Um, life is short. You know, if cancer comes, unfortunately, at some point, um, of course, the medical system will help you, but you want to develop that financial capability to uh, overcome that, I guess. So you want to find a job, you want to have a place to live you know, permanently, not just renting. And if you think about that, if there's some really serious uh, illness 
and the, the, the landlords are kicking out at the same time. <laughs> That's very difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult. But, you know, cancers are out of, you cannot come out of your control. But if you have a, you know, a good financial capability, you have a permanent place to live, you have um, good health insurance, they can pay the bills and everything, and you can still overcome it. There are many types of cancers uh, are not that badly as we thought. So, anyway, this is a, so what I want to say is life is short, and you want to build that skill as much as possible to find a job and earn that 80K. It can be, can be more than 80K, and you want to get that as much as possible. Pretty much out of school, out of college. So don't think about parties that much. You know, parties fine, probably once a semester, twice a semester. And spend more time in the library, communicate with professors to get to get an internship in the lab and coding. Put your fingers on the on the key on the key, keyboard. Start typing whenever you are available. So whenever you start typing that C++ code to practice a very simple sorting algorithm, it's the earliest time you can start developing your skills. It's not too late if you. If you never do that, it's going to be pushed to whatever, to whatever. Probably you will never do that. Just start doing that tonight and think about it. Just find out some code on the code and start learning that, that C++, you know, start from the very simple sorting algorithm, whatever. Or start thinking about uh, exploring the expertise of the professors and department. Uh, company start uh, drafting an email, see if you can get an internship in the, in the lab to, to find a job. Right. Um, okay, life is short. So this is boring, but very important. Just let you know. Okay. It's still trying to build that model in your mind. If you have been trained on this, do some homework assignment, go through the quiz exams. And you will be able to, you will be able to solve this type of problem easily in the future. This is a very fundamental circuit with two resistors connect to a voltage source. And if you close the loop, definitely, the current is gonna flow in the circuit because there are metal lines, there are metal. And you have a battery, it's gonna push current right? going through that resistor, that two resistors. It's going to create a current flow. It's an electric current flow. So it's going to flow through this resistor and this resistor. These are being um, connected in the circuit. So if the current flows through the resistor according to Ohm's law, so the current flows through the resistor is going to create a, a voltage drop. And sometimes you do not, uh, you, you don't know the current, but if you know the voltage and uh, uh, yeah, voltage and resistance, you can you can calculate for the current. It's also valid. Or if you just know the voltage and the current, you can calculate for the resistance. So here we come to this point, because this is simple, just uh, V equals to Y times R, I equals to V over R, R equals to V over I. Sorry. And they have the same current. So this R and this R, they have the same current. That's another concept you wanna keep in mind. But do they have the same voltage? Depends on if they have the same resistance. Why? Why if they have the same resistance, they are going to have the same voltage drop? Yeah, very close. So the circuit has how many currents I just mentioned? Only one current. 
So just one current flow, they share the same pipe, same pipe, same water flow. So the current is, is a physics uh, concept. I think the original concept is, uh, called, uh, is being defined like this. Um, the number of charges flows through a certain cross section per second. Like water pressure, if you think about that, it's, it's the same pipe, then the water flow, the amount of water flows through one cross section of the pipe should be the same everywhere in the pipe. So that's a concept of the current, but we don't have to memorize it in that way. Just keep in mind, if there's a one, there's just one circuit, right? This is just a voltage uh, reference, so zero volts, but nothing else. So current cannot flow through flowing to that point. So current flows through like this, but nothing getting to here. Um, so it's just one current. And if you have the same resistor, the voltage drop will be I times R1 and I times R2 will be the voltage drops for these two resistors. So you can think about it as I all oh, the I's are the same. If the R are the same, then it's the same voltage drop. Make sense? Okay. So this is another model you want to you keep in mind. And now, the voltage divider theory out of this Ohm's law is defined as this, the following. So if you have, you have this linear circuit, it's a linear circuit because B equals to I times R. There's no square, there's no uh, square root. Like that. So it's a linear circuit. And the, the voltage share of that component, of that resistor, the voltage share, which means in the voltage, the, vo the entire voltage is being dropped for several times. So every resistor will take that part of the entire voltage. So you have totally like 100 volts. Dropped for 10 volts, dropped for 10 volts, you have 10 resistors, it's gonna be dropped for 10 times. So well, eventually you got the 100 volts being dropped from the original battery. And so every resistor will have a voltage share in the overall voltage. So I would say the voltage across this R2 is V out, is that correct? Why? Because V out is the voltage from here to here, right? Because V out, we, yes, we defined V out as a node voltage. That's a voltage at this point. But remember, I personally want to do that. But actually, all the voltages are relative. You cannot just say, here is 5 volts, here is 6 volts. It's just for just convenient. We just say that. But literally, it should be, literally it should be, this point compared to ground, it is five volts. But nobody wanna say that, it's just too long. This point is V out. Actually, it's the voltage from here to here, okay? And it's also the voltage across R2. So V out equals to VR2, right? So we can directly write down that the voltage share of this component, the voltage dropped across this resistor, I mean, I'm talking about share, so which means you want to use that part divided by the entire voltage. So that's a share, it's a percentage, the fraction. So what's the overall voltage, which is a whatever being supplied to the power source? That's overall voltage drop, V in. So that's a voltage share of this resistor equals to the resistance share of this resistor. So that's a resistance of this guy and that's the overall resistance. So V out equals to V in times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's the voltage divider theory you want to know. The reason we need to use this 
a lot in the future is because you can directly calculate the output voltage by knowing the V in and the resistors, the values. You can directly just calculate it just using this equation. You don't have to use a current. So why is this valid? Let's derive it. So V out is a voltage over R2 is what? So what is this? Uh, I mean, just looking at VR over R2, so what is this calculating? What is this trying to get? The current, yeah, voltage over resistance current, right? So the current of what? Flows through where? The circuit and also where? For the R2. Because that's a voltage across R2, that's a resistance, boom, boom. It's gonna be current flows through here. And remember, it's the same current in the same circuit, in the same loop. So this equals to what? The overall current, which is V in over what? The overall resistance. That's the two resistance. Or you can say, you can just move things around, move R2 to here, like getting V out equals to V in times R2 over R1 plus R2. So this came from Ohm's law, so it's going to be valid. So that's how this is derived. Voltage divider theory. Because they have the same current. And you do not have to calculate for current all the time. It directly just do this. You can get V out pretty quickly. Okay, that's the circuit basics for uh, one of the problems. I'm going to let you guys know. So we're going to break in 15 minutes. So I'm going to insert some number series. And then we're going to go come back to the voltage series, voltage and currents for the homework one. And then digital again. We are not getting bored. <clears throat> so two years ago, I uh, was trying to pick up my daughter in, from first school at Leeham Elementary. And I saw a little kid with her, with her mom. And there are two doors for the, for the kids to come out to see their parents. So here's 20. Here's this. This is why I'm going to say this, because it's different from the kid's perspective. So the mom told that kid, this is 20. Makes sense, right? And then the kid just learned it and told her mom, this is 2020. Why? Because this looks like 20, and I got two 2020s, and it's going to be 2020, 20, 20, right? So why is it wrong? <laughs> we know, right? It's 22, it's not 2020, because that's two, looks like two, but it's not 20. And it's not uh, two, it's 20. And this is two as well, but it's not 20, it's two. So we human beings defined the layout of the numbers, but the God didn't tell us to do that. We just designed it. So we write 20, 20, uh, 22 like this. If I just hide it, you won't be able to know what is this anymore. Right? Same here. You don't know if it's a zero point or something, right? <laughs> so this is actually two times 10 to the first plus two times 10 to the zero, right? Um, at, so during the orientation, I told you guys, uh, we started counting from zero to nine, and um, and then we start reusing the numbers because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I was trying to design a ten there. Remember, 
I was, why is this not 10? Because it's not designed as 10, but if you want to use it as 10, it's fine. But we are trying to reuse the numbers. This is a decimal. You have to carry out. So what if we do not have all these numbers? So for example, they didn't design all the three, four, five, nine, uh, five, seven, uh, six, seven, eight, nine thing. So it just stop at three. What's going to happen? So we don't have these numbers at all existing on this on this planet. So four won't be four. Won't be this four. So four will be one zero. Right? Because all the so the the way we are getting a ten is because we do not have a symbol to represent ten. So we have to reuse the numbers. The way we do that is we just use another um, digit on the left. Okay, so this one, after this, we don't have four, for example. So next, we have to reuse the previous numbers. So this one here is not one. So what is that? Three. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Is that four? Yeah, four. So this one is four. So this is one zero. One zero equals to what? If you expand it like this, if you expand it. So one zero for this three based number system, one zero is what? Yeah, four, but how you expand it? Expand it. So this is still one, but times four. first. Is that correct? Plus zero times, this is zero times, so this is a four. And uh, if it do not even have two and three, it's going to stop at one. So what is two? going to be one zero as well. And how expand it? So this is a three-based uh, number system, and this is a two-based, oh, this is a four-based, sorry, four-based. This is two-based, which is called binary. How to expand it? It's going to be one times two to the first, plus zero times two to the zeros. It's going to be two. So let's compare these different numbers. <clears throat> In decimal, binary, octal, hexadecimal, so decimal definitely zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. For binary, what are these numbers? Zero, one, one zero, one one. So for binary numbers, one one plus one, one plus one carry zero, one plus one carry zero. So four is one zero zero. Five, one zero one. Six, one zero one plus one carry one one. Seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
16. All right. Octo, octo is A based. So there's no A. After 7, it's going to be 1, 0. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Hex. Hexadecimal is 16 based. So these numbers feels like kind of boring, but it can I just tell you they are the fundamentals of computers. <laughs> I told you uh, last time in orientation, the computer is a how many finger animal? One finger animal. Two or one. One, one finger animal. It doesn't know anything about two. <laughs> There's nothing to store two there. The reason for that is because for switch, it only has the on off. It's either on, either off, or off. Because the transistors are switches. You turn it on, it's on. Turn it off, it's off. So only two states. The computer only has two states. If you have enough number of Units, it can still form a huge number. That's why it can still store huge numbers in computers, even though they are batteries. But you can still have a lot of digits to to give you that number, huge number, right? Um, why the people like using hex? I can tell you, decimal is not really important, uh, popular in computers. So battery is the most popular one, and then hex, especially for programming. But uh, like Arduino's, sometimes you want to you assign the pins for different digital numbers, you use hex. It's binary just takes so long to assign 16 bits. Hex can do it either. So I will let you know how to do that pretty soon. So hex is important, you want to know that. Octo is not. Okay? But just let you know, there's something called octo. Hex. Yeah. Alpha, beta, delta, sigma, letters. So 10 is A in hex, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, 15 is F, 16, 1, 0. So what is one one? Seventeen. Make sense? And for every single hex number, hex digit, it represents four binary digits. Just remember that. Why is that? Because the largest hex number has four digits. And the next number is not, we don't have any other symbols to represent it anymore. It's because it's exceeding five digits. And F will be the max, uh, maximum number, the largest number in hex, which is 15, which is 1111. You need to remember that. Whenever you see 111, you want to know it's 15. Okay? SF in hex. Very common. You'll see it everywhere when you're programming a microcontroller. Any thoughts? Any comments? Is hex what's used for the IP address? Yes, that's a good example. So I've seen like these letters, right? Uh, yeah, the IP. 
They might be, they might be better numbers, four digit but better numbers. So if I give you a number like 10, what's the hex number of it? Hey, what's the battery number of it? And why is 1010? What about 12? Tell us eight plus four. So you want to know that this is one, this is two, this is four, this is eight, this is 16, this is 32, this is 64, this is 128, this is 256, this is 512. So what is this number? 1012, 1024, sorry, 1024. So 1024 means kilo. It's not a thousand, but it's kilo. Interesting, right? It's in computers, it's considered as a kilo because 10 times, uh, two to the tens times two to the tens equals two. So 1024 times 1024. Yeah, so it's a thousand times a thousand is a million, but a thousand twenty-four times a thousand twenty-four is a one mega. It's called one mega. In computers, it's one mega. So two to the tens times two to the tens times two to the tens. Giga. It's not one billion, it's one giga. Make sense? Let's break for 10 minutes. <laughs> Soundtracks, which is a company making all these sound decoders in Durango. So the little PCBs. Zero major by then, and um, they had a physics student <laughs> from our department, and they said they are going to train him. And he only knows uh, very fundamental circuit so ones of like what you just learned, and they wanted to train him. And the starting salary is 90k, and it's pretty good in your angle. I'm pretty sure if he had been learning all these uh, back and forth stuff in the company and salary right now, after two or three years, I think it's over 120 k or something. It's a, it's not a big company, and it's in Durango. If you want to live in Durango, get hired over there. It's uh, it's very sweet, and uh, you know, for this company that's making all these little PCBs, they told us they are selling. Can you imagine that they are selling two thousand words every week <laughs> for toys? Can you imagine there's a is there a, that huge market on this planet? This is something I've never heard of in the past. They are paying Medicare at the beginning. They are always training. Who benefit package? And um, so you can imagine how many similar companies are making PCBs in the US. 
not even your uncle Thermer, I mean, Thermer probably had a hundred of these things. Um, and you will have a lot of chances to make different types of PCBs and programming different component controllers in the, in the curriculum. You'll pick my C351 or C432. And uh, or speak with me if you don't know what, what our cards are going to pick. And you want to learn how to make PCBs. You can find a job in a company like that. You want to ask me for tutorials on boards and sometimes internships, right? I have positions available sometimes. And I'll pay you to learn. Which is the thing on this one? I'm not being tired. So another problem you might see on the homework. Two volts, two volts, six K, two K. Here's V out. That's a weird looking circuit. So what is the current direction and value? And what is V out? So two questions. What's the current direction and value? And what is V out? Ground, no doubt, zero volts. High pressure, so it's going to pump current in that direction. You want to draw the current direction on your paper. So what's the current value? It's only one branch, so you don't actually need to worry about this zero volts. This is a reference voltage. So total I have four volts here, overall. So the current will be four volts over the two resistors. So what is V out? Point zero five. So what is this first? Point five yeah. amp. Oh, uh, mini amp. It's a K, right? So it's mini amp. So voltage here. How do you calculate it? So voltage here compared to the ground. Here is ground. There are a few ways to calculate it. So what's the voltage here compared to ground? That 402. That's zero. And current flow through this res resistor will generate a voltage drop. So here's two volts and drop the by watt, and then that's going to be V out. Is that understandable? So just starting from one point, you know here's two volts definitely compared to the ground. I just want to calculate VL compared to the ground. Sometimes if you have to look at all these different components, it's going to be confusing. So you just uh, starting from two volts and the two volts here is being dropped by whatever I times 2K. So it's going to be VL. Is that clear? Any questions? So I'll calculate it in a very easy way. Six volts, two K, one K. So draw the current direction and calculate the current values and calculate Vs and Vx. So this is Vs, this is Vx. If I ground these two points, they have the same symbol. You can imagine actually they are being shorted together. Even though I didn't draw it, but they are shorted. So here's a high pressure. It's going to pry, uh, push, uh, pump the current in that direction and come back to the cancel. So current equals to 6 volts over 
the overall resistance, whatever that is. And then we're calculating for Vx, for example. We are saying, hey, this is a six volts battery. So Vx is six volts, is that correct? It's not. Keep in mind, what well, I'm saying, the node of voltage, the node. Um, I have to calculate it, to be honest. I couldn't even tell. Why is that? Because this voltage is comparing to the ground. You have to calculate the voltage drop across this resistor. Even though this is a 6 volts battery, but the 6 volts is actually from here to here. That's 6 volts. But from, from here to here, it's not 6 volts. Sometimes it cannot be 6 volts. So you have to use the current. So you calculate the current, right? So whatever Vx is, is going to be I times 1K. The voltage drop crosses resistor. With Vx. Questions? I'm expecting questions. This is confusing. When you are still building the model in your mind, Would be to find the current. Find the current. Yes. Yeah. That's the trick. When you find the current, you know that you Yes. Okay. You can, if you know the current, you can calculate for every single voltage drop in the circuit. And since you know the starting point, which is the voltage source, so you can drop it, drop it, drop it until that point. So you can find out actually every single point, the voltage at uh, the voltage at every single point in the circuit, even for Vs, right? So let's see, what's, what's Vs? So I is flowing from bottom to top. So even though it's zero volts, but actually it's plus minus like this, it's pumping from here to here. So you can imagine Vs is gonna be something negative. Vs is will be negative voltage. <clears throat> so I, so Vs will be, it's the same I, it's just one I in the circuit, so it's going to be I times 2K and negative. Don't forget this negative sign. All right, so Vs is the negative voltage. So it's the open circuit. Open, it's not closed. What is VL? Compared to where? Ground. So what is VL? Do we want to cover the current first? It's an open circuit. Where is the current? You cut the pipe. It's not flowing. No current, no voltage drop. So what's VL? Zero? What's the voltage here? 100 compared to where? Is there, is there a current? Is there a current? So what is I? What's the voltage drop? What's the voltage drop across this 10K? No, voltage drop crosses 10K just between these two nodes. Is there any voltage drop according to Ohm's law? Ohm's law is I times R. So what's the voltage drop? I times R. What is, what is, v, what is the voltage drop? Zero. Zero what? Volts. So no voltage drop because no current. So 100 volts here, 100 here. Interesting. What's VL? 
there are why no voltage drop no current nothing zero volts zero volts what's we are zero Be careful of the quiz next Monday, okay? So it'll be something like this. What's VR? Okay. What's the voltage here? What's the voltage here? Compared to where? Where's ground? Here. So what's the voltage here? So this zero volts and this voltage source is gonna force it's going to force that voltage increase from here to here by 100 volts compared to the ground. So this is 100 volts compared to the ground. So what's the VL? Any questions by far? Always think about the current and voltage drop. That's a Look at these homemade examples. <laughs> Just want to make it as strange as possible to so confuse you guys. <laughs> What's VL? Why? It's being shorted to the ground. It's being shorted to the ground. So it's ground. <clears throat> This is something like a, it's a minus, volt, minus one volt battery. Cannot buy it over the counter, but it exists just on the paper. What is VL? Why? Yes. Uh, What is VL? Five volts. Shorted to this node. This is five. This is five, right? Ten K, ten K, a hundred volts, a hundred volts. Here's the out. So hundred volts here means from here to here is hundred volts increase, right? Here to here is a hundred volts. Or it's a voltage drop from here to here is 100 volts drop. So what's VL? So what is VL? Is there any current flowing in the circuit? Why? And with the same pressure. They're trying to pump water against each other, but actually it's the same pressure, so water is not going to go anywhere. It's not even emitting heat because there's no current. So there's no current. 
So the uh, power for energy in the circuit can be calculated by Vi, V times I, or I square, oh sorry, I square R, that's called power. You can see the, the unit for power is watts. You have seen this a lot of places, right? 150 watts uh, here or something. So it's V times I. If there's no I, there's no power or energy consumption. Or V square over R is also power. Any questions before we call it today? There's no current. So there are... Uh, yeah, so uh, we, I think there are several ways to calculate it. Um, one way is called superposition, but it's something like you, you are going to learn in circuit one. You have to assume in like one uh, voltage source is uh, being used and the other one is shorted. And then you do it for the other source and then you calculate the overall current and voltages for each component. And you superimpose the values to each other. And you can imagine. So let me do it really quick. So there may be a better way to explain that because this is getting too deep into this topic. So the superposition method is being used as follows. So when you are trying to solve this circuit, you have to assume the other one is being shorted like a wire. So only this one is working in the circuit. So that's the first circuit you have. It's 100 volts. This is 10K. It's 10K. So you can calculate the voltage here right now. So what's, what's the voltage here? It's a voltage divider, so it's going to be 50 volts. So what's the voltage across this resistor? 100 minus 50 is 50. So from left to right, it's 50. Okay. Now let's look at the other one. So if this one is not affecting the circuit, now we assume this is shorted, this is um, effective, then its uh, circuit looks like this. It's 10K, 10K, 100 volts. So current flows through that direction. So it's from right to left. Also, it's still a voltage divider because it's 100 volts. So the middle thing is going to be 50 volts. Now this is ground. So 50 volts here. Uh, no, negative. And 50 volts to 0 volts, that's plus minus. So if you flip it, so the voltage from here to here is 50 volts. The voltage from here to here will be negative 50 volts because this is zero, this is 50. And now you impose, superimpose to each other. So now you only, only assume one uh, polarity for each component. So for this little resistor from these two circuits, for the first one, you are getting left to right, which is 50 volts. For the second one, it's still the same resistor, but left to right is negative 50 volts. And now you calculate the overall voltage drop across that resistor is 50 plus negative 50 is going to be zero volts, which means there's no voltage drop across that resistor as a final result. So the only reason of that zero voltage drop is because there's no current. Questions? No. So, uh, are we engineering or computer engineering? Uh, you major. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not entirely Okay. But do you like it? I mean, you. No, I do like it. Okay. Great. 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 Yeah. But you you ask good questions, like awesome questions. 
I like it. So you, uh, for, for other people, if you, whatever major you are in right now, but if you want to uh, take this class, it's called Engineering 201. But you, you are going to learn some fundamental stuff from this class, in this class as well. But if you want to learn more, this will be the class you want to take. It's a sophomore class in the second year. Um, very critical. So this is the first one and another one, uh, CE241. So if you have learned these two classes, I would encourage you to contact me to get an internship in, in a lab. You get, get paid and working on something. But you, if you haven't, but you, you think you already have some experience with uh, some projects, you're also welcome to, to contact me as well. Okay, okay we'll see you next week. Uh, keep in mind, turn, turn the homework one. You can find the link on the website. So the way you turn it in, let me just tell you. So you do, you'll have writings here, and then you fold it. Fold everything together uh, like this, so your handwritings are inside, and you put your name here. If I grade, grade it, I uh, turn it back to you, people cannot see your uh, handwriting and grade. Um, and there will be a quiz next month as well for this stuff, for the current. In the class, at the beginning of the class. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Pay for it. You have a lot of pages. Yeah. Are you trying the problems on your website? Yes. Electronics. Electronics. So the E is Y. Y I. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good Thanks. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Have a good one.